This is Faith Works, and right now I'm here with uh, Benjamin Dunn, and uh, I'm Beck Ewing. And basically, what we're going to be talking today is there is a election coming up for South Carolina Senate seat 20, and then, in fact, there's a runoff that's going to be happening on August 28th. And I'm just wanting to allow you guys to be able to be get to know some of the candidates. And here is Benjamin Dunn. So, hey, Ben. Good morning, Beck. It's very nice to be here with you. I wanted to go into a more specific, kind of more the second uh, issue that you said when it comes to defunding Planned Parenthood. Uh, in, in your personal views, what what is your view of, of regarding life in the womb? Like, what is your view on that? Yeah, you know, I've, I've always been a pro-life guy. I, uh, I believe that life starts at conception. I've... Um, I've um, the, the the personhood legislation that's that uh, came pretty close to being passed this this year. Uh, certainly, way closer than it than it, than it has uh, yes, previously. Yes, closer. I've uh, I've already said that I would you know sponsor it and support it and you know push it. Um, you know, kind of at, at every you know in between committee and out of committee and in session out of session all that sort of thing so um i uh, anything that we can do uh to to end the practice of abortion you know we need to do mm -hmm. uh, because again life does start at conception now i guess a couple of things i think that we as christians you know who, who are pro-life that we need to do a better job of and and to be more cognizant of is one we need to always strive to utterly outcompete the abortion provider folks in the mm -hmm. marketplace of ideas because you have these women oftentimes they're younger and they they, they find themselves uh in a situation that you know they they didn't anticipate they're scared they don't uh, uh know what what it is to do and if they hear you know a hundred loving caring christ-like voices for every you know, one they hear of, of Planned Parenthood, then that puts them in a much better place you know, to make the right choice to sure. sustain life. Sure. What do you life. What do you think is going to take for that to happen? Particularly as Christians, I really focus on the community of faith because this is our responsibility. Mm -hmm. I think that we we just have to do a better job of of living and loving the way Christ told us to. Because again, we can, we can outlaw abortion tomorrow, but mm -hmm murder and rape and theft and lying under oath all those things have been illegal forever mm -hmm. do do they still go on yes unfortunately they do mm -hmm. and abortion is the same way so yes we need to change the law yes we need to do things like enact personhood legislation and outlaw abortion and of course there's you know there's things at the federal level that that, that have to happen too with that but ultimately we are going to defeat abortion with love way more than than law yeah you know uh, and uh, I, I totally agree with you there that to me the pro-life stance is not is is really very inclusive so in the sense of that we it's a love of life from conception until death and so um i think one of the accusations has that has been leveled at uh pro the pro-life community is that we're just pro-birth we don't actually care about people afterwards I would actually like to argue that point just a little bit because I usually find that the people who are actually active, actually active in pro-life views are also active in helping people. Right. What I often find is people who say that they're pro-life, but they do nothing in either of those of those sure. particular issues. So, um, so and which comes to making sense. So, if you love people enough for them not to want to die. You also usually love people enough to want to help them as they're living. And so if we can understand how that comes together and become active in both, I agree we should be able to see a real forwardness in this particular issue. Now, um, the thing about personhood legislation, um, it is a little bit different than a lot of other pro-life legislation that is out there right now. Uh, it does not allow for cases of rape or incest. It um, it actively challenges Roe ver versus Wade, and this is actually something that scares a lot of people and or makes them uncomfortable. So, what would you say to somebody who is asking you about the fact that it doesn't allow for rape and incest? 
when you're talking about abortion and all the, the issues that, that surround it, I mean, it's the entire, you know, Pandora's box of all the horrific things that, that people do to one another. Mm-hmm. And it, it, you know, you can, you, you can pull up uh, uh, situations that, that are just horrific. First and foremost, we've got to love people. Sure. Now, some people will say, well, well now, wait a minute, I'm, I'm pro-life and, 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 and I, I get that, but, but wow, you know, when, when you get into these areas of rape and incest, which, which admittedly, if you look at, you know, statistically that the folks who are getting abortions, obviously that's a, that, that's a very tiny piece, but still right. that's, that, that's real. Those, we're talking mm-hmm. about real people and real lives and things mm-hmm. are going through. Um, I don't pretend to say that, 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 that these aren't really tough, hard situations. They are. Mm-hmm. I, I guess the, the, the issue for me, though, is in these rape princess cases, you're, you're, you're dealing with generally a, young, a, a younger woman mm-hmm. who has been through, you know, hell. And um, at, at the same time, though, you, you have this, the, this new life. And, and I certainly don't don't in any way wish to to put any you know pain or or uh, uh, you know further stress on an already horrific situation for for the young lady. But at the same time, you can't pretend it never happened. You can't snuff out you know the the, the God given spark of life. Mm-hmm. And and I, a lot of people will say that you know two wrongs in this situation don't don't make a right. Mm-hmm. That's true. But but again, I don't. We should never say that in in, in kind of flippant or cursory way, mm-hmm. uh, because we we need to we need to, to love and cherish and care for the again most of the time young lady who's going through this every bit as much as we do mm-hmm. for you know the 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 child that's involved. You, you, you see a goal like, hey, we want to outlaw abortion. That's something we can all work to and get around and, and, and get behind And as pro-life people. I think for all of us, it, the, the, the more difficult piece, though, is the, the day in and day out, you know, dealing with the needs of, uh, mm-hmm. of people, loving people. It's much harder to love and, and to do that consistently than it is to let's all rally behind the cause. We need to do both. Right. Well, I actually see that it is, you know, I've been involved with the process of different pro-life legislation and things like that. And I see that there's actually difficulty in both because um, it's so easy in the moment in which you're sitting in a committee and, you know, trying to decide whether to further personhood legislation or not. And then you hear the other side and most likely it is a woman that is a some type of, you know, um, uh, some type of representative or senator or something, and they'll look a look a uh, supporter of of pro life legislation in the face and say, "How could you ever, you know, think about forcing a young woman who's been raped to have that baby?" And that is a you know you can you can sit there and sense that you feel sorry for <laughs> that particular sit- situation, and oftentimes you see the senator or the representative just kind of fold. And or stumble around and you know and stuff like that because I think a lot of the a lot of the uh, narrative has been that uh, children in these situations are a curse and that they're harmful to the mother and so therefore how could you you know say that this particular child now I've personally have worked with people who work with people who have been raped and uh, have conceived through incest and stuff like that. And um, I can tell you that actually it's the narrative's the opposite. That actually having the child and is usually a healing process because something good comes out of something bad, which is a very Christian kind of concept and grace that God allows something good to come out of something bad. Not because the bad thing was good, because he wants to take a bad situation and bring good of it and you know so in other words beauty out of ashes and so um, and so there's a life that has now promise and a, and a future and can love and be loved and so love can come out of something as horrible as rape and incest and so I totally agree with you we need to learn to love these people and be sensitive to them um, but like I said, on the other side, I do believe it's going to take a lot of courage 
to be able to stand up for the children that have no voice sure. during those particular things because all life is equally valuable when no matter how they've come to be right. and so uh, and I know that's one that's part of the reason why that you have supported uh, personally legislation as opposed to you know saying I'm pro-life but I'm not going to say personhood in this particular case I would say the other thing that makes people uncomfortable about personhood legislation is in regards to its challenge to Roe versus Wade so your lawyer what would you say uh, is the idea of the Supreme Court um, true or false um, the Supreme Court puts forth the law of the land I, I don't think that that is in any way what was intended by our founders and I don't mm -hmm. really see that as, 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 as in, in any way what the Constitution calls for mm, okay. now um, and abortion particularly um, is a is a great example of that I, I think abortion should be illegal but in terms of my preferred method of, of getting there right again I think it should be through the legislative process you, you just it just doesn't make sense to me to have these tremendously important overarching issues uh, of policy decided by this this small little group of men and women so what do you think it's going to take to uh, specifically to abolish abortion in our state and then in the nation well you know it's going to have to uh it's going to have to, to, to be at, at, really at the national level first, and we can set the stage for that, of course, um, by passing things like personal legislation, which would then be challenged, and um, you know that would uh, you know percolate its, its way up through the federal system and, and get to the Supreme Court and allow it to have an opportunity to uh, overrule Roe versus, Ro versus Wade. A couple of things I think we need to keep in mind, though, uh, you know, we have um, uh, you know. Uh, Brett Kavanaugh is the is the current nominee uh, mm -hmm. for the court, and if you just you know listen to various commentator types, at least most of the ones I listen to, it sounds as if he 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 is very likely to be confirmed. Mm -hmm. um, as best we can tell, most people seem to to feel that he is he is a pro life kind of guy, but even if he uh, even if the the a case comes up in the next year or two and the court in fact overturns Roe versus Wade, all that's going to do is send the issue back to the states. You know, the law is going to be what it was, you know, before 1973, sure. in which basically it was a patchwork um, issue, and and each state had its um, had uh, had its own statutes. You know, which for uh, me abortion. would be a great start because at least in South Carolina, <laughs> least, you know, and, and and what you would would of course see then is is you know most of your your red states, your more conservative mm -hmm. states, South Carolina being one of them, would um, would outlaw abortion. Obviously, you know your Californias and New York mm -hmm. and Massachusetts and places like that um, would um, keep that keep on. Keep it, keep yeah. it, uh, keep it absolutely legal. There's no question about that. And so then, you know, it, it would become more of a fight to, you know, do we outlaw this at the national level or we do we do it state by state? You know, how do we how do we go about that? So, but the other thing too to keep in mind is. Even if you know by whatever means abortion were were made um, uh, were outlawed mm -hmm. nationally tomorrow, mm -hmm. that's not going to end abortions. I mean, obviously you've got you know folks, your your Planned Parenthood folks, your your mm -hmm. NARAL folks, and um, you know, they are uh, you know they are strident. Mm -hmm. So in some cases to the point of zealotry uh, about abortion and you know, you can only I, I can only imagine the the uh, The analogies they would draw to the Underground Railroad and Harriet mm -hmm. Tubman and how they were you know, really taking, kind of ironic Yeah, taking <laughs> taking ladies you know, here and there to, to have uh, abortions and and they would uh, you know make heroes out of you know, these Doctors that were that were willing to do it illegally. So I, I, again Yes, we, we go back to our, our kind of our original point that A, we need to, to outlaw the practice, but B, we got to outcompete it, we got to outlove. Yeah. yeah, and actually, the what you just said, it's really kind of ironic because I feel I know exactly what you're talking about because when the Emancipation Proclamation was put forth and laws were put into a place that, you know, outlawed slavery, that wasn't the end of it. No. They, and especially in the South, you know, people died upholding trying to uphold that that ideal 
in the South, that there was still kind of a war, even in a, of sorts, maybe not official, but, you know, a, a definite, you know, um, violence and upheaval over that issue for a long time. And, you know, people really had to sacrifice in order to be able to make this something that the country eventually accepted. And so undoubtedly, even if abortion, like you said, is abolished, it's something that we're within our culture that we're going to have to, to fight anyway. Um, but of course, it makes it a slightly different ball game than there, you know, this person's going to do something and there's nothing you can do about it, you know, kind, sure. <laughs> kind of thing. So absolutely. Um, so my question is, how do you think, what do you think your role is when it comes into supporting pro-life and, and, and that kind of legislation? If I'm elected, if I end up in, in, in the Senate, mm -hmm. um, and that role, uh, it would be to you know, support pro-life causes wherever, wherever we can. In my personal life, there's a, um, a crisis pregnancy center that, that we've mm -hmm. been doing some work with and, and supporting. And we've got you know, the, the Daybreak, which does a wonderful job. And then, um, and then uh, Life Bridge as well. Bridge and Newberry. All right. Well, thanks so much, Thank you, uh, Ben. And I really wish you good luck. And um, maybe we'll be able to speak again in the future. I hope so. Thank you, Ben. All right. Well, this is the Faith Works, and you can find it at beckewing.com, B-E-C-K-E-W-I-N-G.com. Also, this will be posted on our Facebook page, so uh, facebook.com slash faithworks. And it also will be posted on our uh, facebook.com slash contagious disciple making as well. So we have, we're going to have it on several different platforms. Take this particular video, share it around. People need to know uh, the issues. They need to know the candidates. And so uh, thank you so much, and I hope you guys have a best day.